Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Serious Effects Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Kramer. Now then, in today's tutorial, we're going to be making a cool-looking title graphic like you see here. And we have some 3D layers and some particles and a bunch of fun stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new composition and we'll use the NTSC DV preset and set the duration to 300 frames or about 10 seconds. Then I'm going to take the text tool, click in the middle of the comp and type serious effects. Center that up a little bit. Now let's go ahead and make a new solid and we'll make it instead of comp size 300 by 600 so it's a little taller. Then we'll choose effect noise and grain fractal noise and let's go and set this up I'm gonna to toggle down the transform properties and let's uncheck the uniform scaling and so we can scale these independently and let's take the height up to about 3000 and I know the slider doesn't go that far so just type it in 3000 and the width um, let's Hmm, let's just set that to 75. Then let's go to the contrast, and we want to pump this up. Say about 500, and it's getting a little blown out, so let's bring the brightness down some. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Now let's go to the beginning of the composition, and let's go down to the evolution option. So the evolution basically creates sort of this animation through the fractal noise. But what we want to do is set the stopwatch at 00, zero go to frame 200, and let's add one revolution. And that way it cycles through one whole time. Next thing we'll do is choose effect, distort Bezier warp. And this is a really, really cool plugin that allows you to distort your image using these Bezier curves. So what we want to do is just start playing with these little handles here and just kind of create a uh, curvy look of sorts. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, Try not to squeeze the middle up too much, but, you know, just get something that looks streaky. And then we can increase the quality to 10, which just makes it a little smoother in the uh, thinner areas. And let's change the transfer mode of this layer to screen. And it may be hard to see, but just change that to screen. And then we're going to choose effect, color correction, hue, and saturation. And instead of adjusting the main controls, check the colorize box. And we're going to just play around with the hue. And we're going to start with the kind of a blue color. So about 192 degrees or so will give us a nice blue, 199, I guess. And let's increase the saturation. Now let's add a nice glow. So I'm going to choose Effect, Stylize, and Glow. And for this, I just want to increase the radius, maybe about 80 or so. And if we want to brighten up the uh, glow a little bit, we can also brighten up the fractal noise. But for now, we'll just go and keep it as it is. Then what we want to do is duplicate this layer. So I'm going to duplicate the layer by hitting Control D. And so now we have two of these streaky layers. And what I want to do then is take the second one, and we'll call it green. If you select the layer name and hit return, you can rename the layers. And I'm going to select the green layer and go to the hue and saturation controls and push this over to a green color. And as you can see, a lot of colors look pretty good, but we're just going to use kind of a nice green. Let me bring the saturation down a little bit. So that looks good. Also, I want to go to my Bezier Warp and let's sort of move these uh, nodes around just so that it's not exactly like the other one and so you have a little bit of uh, uniqueness to it. 
Okay, and let's go ahead and just move this back in place. Okay, now let's offset the time of the green one. So let's just move it over and then just position it out of frame there. And of course, we can go back to the fractal noise and increase the contrast and decrease the brightness. And that'll give us basically less to see and just, you know, more streaking. So increase the contrast, decrease the brightness. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, make this series effects text uh, stand out a little bit more. I'm going to put it on top and center it again. I'm going to choose Effect, Generate, Ramp. And if you select the name Ramp, we have these two little controllers. And if you hold Shift down, bring them closer together. And create a little gradient there, and I'll just make it maybe a little blue. Then let's add a Drop Shadow, Effect, Perspective, Drop Shadow. And we'll set the distance to 2, and duplicate that again. Set the distance to zero and give it a little bit of a softness. So that basically gives us a little soft shadow with like a nice harsh shadow. And if we increase the opacity of both these, we'll be able to see that a little bit better. So that looks nice. And if we can go back to our ramp, bring our white color up so that we see that a little bit more distinctly. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, let's create our particles that are kind of floating around in the air. So I'm going to choose Layer, New, Solid. This time we want to make it the comp size and choose OK. And let's go over to our Effects and Preset palette and let's type in Particle. And we have our CC Particle World. And if you don't have this plugin, it's on your After Effects installation disk. So I'm going to drag that out to our Layer. And basically we have this really crazy particle system, but that's a little too crazy, uh, even for my taste. So let's solo the layer and let's make some adjustments. First, let's change it from the grid um, floor to just off. And let's go to our producer settings, our physics, and our particle. And what we want to do is increase the radius of the X so that it's kind of wide and make it tall and make it three-dimensional so let's see 0 0.6 0 0.3 and 1 or so and let's set the velocity to 0 so it doesn't shoot out from a single point and instead of having the gravity pull it down let's set the gravity to 0 but as you can see look at that you almost have a nice rain effect see that hidden tip right there. Bring the birth rate down to like 0.2 and um, you know change the color and you might have yourself some rain. But let's focus here for a moment. I want to change the gravity to zero and so now our particles just kind of sit there and let's change the particle type to lens bubble and that creates this nice effect here and our birth and death size to one mm, point one five. 0.15. So pretty small. And if you want to change the color of this, change the solid setting color. So if you want it white, use white. Other things that may be important is the birth rate and of course the birth size. So play around with those to get the look you're after. Now if we take the solo layer off, we can see that our particles are generating in our scene and that's starting to look pretty good and I'm just going here got some very cool very unique looking effect in the background so what we need to do now is change the color of our particles so I'm going to choose effect color correction hue and saturation and again we'll colorize it and bring the lightness down a little bit and that will actually add the color since it's pure white and bring the saturation up and let's pick a color here so you can't go wrong with like a blue that looks pretty good now the very cool thing about this particle system is it's 3d camera aware now what that means is if I create a new camera 
choose OK, I can orbit around these particles in 3D space. Pretty cool. So the only problem is our other layers aren't three-dimensional. So what we need to do is put them into 3D space as well. So let's go ahead and name our particle layer so that we don't get confused. And let's take our serious effects, our green streaks and our blue streaks, and turn them all into 3D layers by clicking on the 3D layer checkbox. Then take our serious effects. Then if we go to the blue gizmo, we can kind of move it down on the z-axis to kind of pull it towards us. So just be careful because if you're on the x you'll move it left and right and on the y up and down. So you just want to go to the z and just bring it forward a little bit. Not too much. Then we'll take our green layer and we'll just push it back. And our blue layer will also push it back just a little bit. Now you see how we made the layer extra long? That way we don't get cut off like this one is getting cut off. Uh, let's just scale it up. Simple solution. <laughs> okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's create a simple little camera move. Okay, now at frame one you'll notice that the particles are not in the scene and that's because they haven't emitted yet. So just offset the layer so that they're in the scene and uh, just you know extend your comp um, if you need to make it a little bit longer. but. This should work for most cases. Now let's create our 3D camera move. So with the camera selected, I'm going to hit P on the keyboard for the position, set a stopwatch, then take the orbit camera tool, move to you know, 150 frames, and just kind of orbit around. And if I hold down shift, everything will kind of stay together. So that way we create this nice little camera move. And uh, let's go ahead and play that back. Okay, so it's looking pretty cool. Now the one other thing I did in the other example was use a new solid that was black and I just added like a lens flare, the famous lens flare and just kinda used a color correction, hue and saturation to tint it like a blue again. It's all about getting your colors together. Let's see, something like that. And bring the lightness down a little bit. I put it underneath all the layers, so you just had a little something back there, you know, just something subtle. But anyway, um, this is uh, one way to create some very interesting effects. And to you know change this whole thing, just go back into the fractal noise settings and play around with the transform. You know, may maybe make the scale width a little thicker or even a little thinner and you'll just see some very interesting things uh, just playing around with that fractal noise so that's that's how come you know you can never make the same design twice especially when you're you know having so many different settings well it's about that time for me to say goodbye but I hope you enjoyed watching the serious effects podcast hosted by me Andrew Kramer and of course it could not be possible without the fine folks at creativecow.net. I recommend you go down there. Hey, I recommend you go down there right now. And be sure to check out my training DVD, Serious Effects and Compositing, at creativecowtraining.net. A lot of good stuff there as well. And of course, you can visit my website at www.videocopilot.net. Once again, my name is Andrew Kramer, and this is the Serious Effects Podcast.